James was enjoying his life on the island of Sodor, but he still had a lot to learn. You're a special mixed traffic engine, said the fat controller. You can pull coaches or trucks quite easily, but you must learn by your mistakes. James knew what the fat controller meant. He could well remember that dreadful accident on his first day. Oh yes, there's a bat coming to help you. Her name is Rouge. Oh, here she is now. Hello, you must be James. Why yes I am. And you are Rouge the Bat, am I correct? Yes I am. So, shall we get started on work? Of course, let's get to it. Be careful with the coaches, James. They don't like being bumped. Everyone came to admire James. I'm a really splendid engine, he thought, and suddenly let off steam. A shower of water fell on the fat controller's nice new top hat. Just then, the guard blew his whistle, and James thought they had better go. Go on, go on, he puffed to Edward. Don't push, don't push, replied Edward. The coaches were grumbling too. Don't go so fast, don't go so fast. But James didn't listen. When at last they stopped at the next station, two coaches were beyond the platform. They had to go back to let the passengers out. But no one seemed to know about the fat controller's top hat, though James felt happier. Presently they came to a station where Thomas, Sonic and Geo were waiting with Thomas's two coaches. Hello James, feeling better? That's right Thomas. What the? Is that who I think it is? Rouge? Well, well, well. If it isn't Geo and Sonic, what are you two doing here? That's what we were trying to ask the same thing, Rouge. Why are you here? I came to this railway just to help out. I see. Oh, that's my guard's whistle. We must go. We don't know what the fat controller would do to make me run this branch line, as well as you and Sonic. And Thomas popped off importantly. Then James Rouge and Nedwood came to the field where James had had his accident. The fence were mended and the cows were back again. They ended their journey and rested before setting off for home. Rouge can see that James was very worried. What's the matter, James? I'm just worried about what the fat control would say about his new top hat. Oh, I'm pretty sure he'll forget it. But Rouge was wrong. He spoke severely to him the next morning. If you can't behave, James, then I shall have to take away your red coat and I'll have you painted blue like Thomas Edward and Gordon. James did not like that at all. Neither did Rouge. James was very rough with the coaches as he brought them to the platform. Don't talk! Come on! Rouge was very worried about James because he was in a bad mood. Gordon never has to fetch his own coaches and he's only painted blue. To make James even more cross, this time no one came near him. I'll show them. They think Gordon is the only engine who can pull coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. You're going too fast. You're going too fast, replied the coaches. James laughed and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop, they said. We're going to stop. Why have we stopped, Rouge? The brakes are hard on, James. Leaking the pipe, most likely. You bang the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. How shall we mend it, boys? We'll do it with newspaper and a leather bootlace. Well, where's the bootlace coming from? Why don't you ask the passengers? Hmm. Let me see. Aha! You're the leather bootlace, sir. Will you lend it to me, please? I won't, said the man. Well then, I'm afraid the train will just stop where it is. The passengers all said what a bad railway it was. Then they told the man how bad he was instead. Everyone was very cross. At last he handed his laces over. 
The driver tied a pad of newspaper tightly round the hole in the brake pipe and James was able to pull the train. But he was a sadder and wiser James and took care never to bump coaches again. <laughs>